I saw you in the rain, like a painting you were painting with your brushes for me to see. There you were, beneath the train far above our heads, under a matrix of copper stop metallics, weary following the rails. Your look was vital, the tired was around you, not in you, not of you. The canvas oils passionate kissing the canvas off the lashes of the brush. Sparks fell from the rails and evaporated in the heavy shadows of high rises. My pulse quickened as I dove into your scene. Kel, I found you after so long. So long it boiled off to steam in a special coffee house where they served us Papua New Guinea and Imperial pints. Your eyes met mine and both of us fell out of the urban grind like a shot of cool almond milk, dousing the fire of a bitter brew. I released a wonderful, fuck you, at a cab almost ran us down in a crosswalk, then looked back and you were gone. Again I searched for you, in and out of alleys, steam coming up from the potholes. We are awakened by the city, moment to moment, and now suddenly you painted me back in, but you were out of focus, and why? Do something, quick. I have a typewritten mind of fresh ink for you. Come here. The letters will be bold and clear to stamp you into view. But what got in our way? Everything here appeared to wash away. Only the shadows of the high rises thickened with fresh fro fog from the bay. I saw you and followed. Some young hoodie bumped into you as we wove our way down a busy thoroughfare, rush hour and he spun you around and placed you out of focus again. I elbowed my way through a couple corporate fobs, but you're not there. I grabbed a man's briefcase. I wanted to beat him with it in a frosted window pane of a dream. You dialed up a comeback. I could see you again. You came up with a steam from the underground through the pothole covers. All I caught was your profile. Fiery Kel, the blood is still hot. Brilliant because you photoshopped the instant in your mind and have it splashed all over me. We traveled toward one another, block to block. City life. Oh, it feels good to hold on to. But then you were gone again and I woke up in tears. Maze beside me, awake and still a little vexed. I could only put up with his reactionary so long, and why should I? It's not like I was a withholding type, passive aggressive like some girls are. No, he was still getting some. If anything, the physical was our only way out of this tangle we were in. For how could I let it go? This dishonesty. And yet boys want to start acting like they own a girl because they're worried they'll lose you. Try calming you down about it. Relax. Can't we go back to how it was and get angry instead of open and honest? And they start thinking you're the one hiding something. Some sort of projective identification or my name is Freud. All the insecurities arise. And what was a pure oxytocin play becomes a big downer of hurt feelings, jealousies, even emotional blackmail. Any girl knew the warning signs. Only some could pull out of the tailspin in time. Attachment was a bitch, but my love for Maze was elevated. I believed him beyond any immediate concern. He was a boy and he was gonna be angry and you can only work with what you have. 